I'm your host, Megalon Jones, and welcome back to the Sharp End of the Stick. It's the 4th of July week in the United States, and we're going to watch stuff blow up. Specifically, we're going to be testing the American thermal site systems found in the M60A3 TTS and the M1 Abrams. And this is more or less a way for me to get a little bit more familiar with some of the American hardware from the late 70s and early 80s. And as such, I'm going to be going through a couple of scenarios. One's a quick mission, and the second is a user-made scenario that, well, both of them feature the thermal sites. Uh, the first one is the quick mission. It's dawn, October 82. A armor-heavy combined arms team is defending from a Soviet attack. We are expecting the better part of a Soviet tank battalion. Team X-rays in good position. We've got the Battalion scouts in support. They are in the upper right to be our eyes. The tanks are more or less line abreast. And since the M60 TTS doesn't have smoke launchers, I've set up the artillery to land uh, a smoke mission at the five minute mark. Along with that, I've got four pairs of helicopter gunships that will be coming in to join the chaos. The patent tanks are in hull down position covered by tree lines. This is ideal for a defensive setup along with uh, the patents we have fourth platoon tow launchers and i've got them set up on the flanks within the first turn we're getting very solid contacts which tells me my tts system is working good the soviets show up and one of the first things they do is they start laying down their own smoke barrage I'm a little bit worried about that guy right there. That is a mobile SAM launcher, so I've got to take him out before the helicopters arrive. The Red Army Battalion maneuvers beyond its own smoke screen, assuming that I can't see what's going on, but I see straight through it thanks to the TTS system. However, there's a bit of a kink in my plan because of the existence of the SAM launchers, I have to give the scout platoon and other parts of my force open fire orders before the five minute mark where my own smoke screen lands. The whole point of this is to kill the Soviet uh, SAM launchers, which happens really quick. At turn five, my own smoke barrage lands and it's time to give the entire company team orders to open fire and the whole thing turns into a turkey shoot.
the most interesting part of the engagement occurs within about a five minute window and you're seeing the last turn where the Soviets present any type of threat. I've left the hit text on so that you get an idea of how many hits we're making. Basically it's one shot, not necessarily one kill, but they're hitting their targets con consistently. After this, the Soviets go to ground behind their own tree cover and don't do anything for the next 40 minutes or so. So we pull the plug on the scenario. I'm not really going to pat myself on the back for this. Beating the AI in a quick mission battle isn't really anything that special, but it does show, as you'll see, um, that the patent TTS system really works well. The Soviets were never really any threat to me. Uh, my casualties come from an artillery barrage that landed on my scout platoon. So we're going to be going on to the next phase of this test here, and it is a player designed scenario, and I'll be linking to it in the description. Um, we have another armor heavy combat team, but this time we have the M1 Abrams tank. Uh, the scenario is based on the opening battle to uh, the 1987 novel Team Yankee, and if you're familiar with it, um, it's pretty much a slaughter on the Soviets. So the Abrams tanks have their own designed thermal tank sites as broad daylight, but more importantly, they have their own built-in grenade launchers for smoke so I don't have to use my artillery to call in the smoke screen to blind the Soviets. The terrain is uh, typical German trees, rolling hills, valleys. I have to keep an eye on the forests on either side of my flanks. I've got a feeling that's where the enemy's coming from. The Soviets arrive, and the first thing I see is a platoon of T-72s, which is something you probably would have seen in 7th Corps sector in Bavaria, as I think the Czech Army had those. Once... The Warsaw Pact tanks arrive, we move our tanks up into firing position, pop smoke, and start shooting. It takes about a turn for that T-70 platoon to get wiped out. Um, they manage a couple shots off to no effect. They're firing on the move and within about 30 seconds, the smoke barrage takes over, or not the barrage, but the, the smoke from my own grenade launchers and they die. few minutes after this, the infantry force arrives and then they die. Uh, it's made up a lot of BMP2s, uh, some BTR specialty vehicles. Um, basically, I have a hold fire command until they enter, you know, the final part of the tree line. So anytime they cross that, they just get completely cooked.
okay, now we got a total victory. Again, I'm not going to pat myself on the back. If you read the novel, you know that this is pretty much how it goes. Team Yankee doesn't suffer any losses as far as I know in the novel. It's been 30 years since I read that. But what have we learned? We learned that if you can afford to take the American Thermal Sites, do so as they're the game changer. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I got a scenario coming up next, and I hope to see you on the flip side. It's time for a crash course in terror at the dorm that dripped blood. Oh, uh, great. What's wrong? The phone's dead. Did you hear anything up on the roof? Do you think we need to go up there? Need to? Yeah, we don't need to do anything. <laughs> where the only thing you'll learn is how to die. The Dawn That Dripped Blood, rated R.